You're listening to The Dental Guys, episode 63. Facebook is not the new peer-reviewed journal. Are peer-reviewed journals dead? Is Facebook taking over for journal articles? This week on The Dental Guys, Joel Gonzalez discusses how Facebook could be driving implant companies in the wrong direction. Joel has been around the implant industry for almost 30 years, and he shares some important insight on some things to really maybe pay attention to in the industry. We discuss this and so much more this week on The Dental Guys. This episode of The Dental Guys is brought to you by the Dental Crafters Network, your implant restorative connection. From surgical planning to patient-specific guides, quality implants, and final restorations, the Dental Crafters Network provides one relationship with infinite possibilities. Call 1-800-472-8302 today. That's 1-800-472-8302. And by Restorative Driven Implants. Understand, place, restore, and implement dental implant treatment from John and Wes, the dental guys. Go to restorativedrivenimplants.com right now to sign up for the next series of courses and take your implant education to the next level. Well, welcome to this episode of The Dental Guys. I'm John, The Dental Guy. And I'm Wes, The Dental Guy. And we're here with uh, somebody that we're really excited to introduce you guys to, Joel Gonzalez. Welcome, Joel. Joel, The Dental Guy. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. The honorary dental guy of the day. We have crowned honorary dental guys. Yeah, it has (laughs) happened before. So this this is another, uh, another, another person we've been excited to get on the show for a little while because, you know, as you guys know, we talk a lot about implant dentistry and uh, we just got finished today we with, do, uh, we do talk a lot about implant. Dentistry. I mean, just a little, a little occasionally, bit, occasionally, <laughs> a little bit, occasionally. And we just, we just got done today with a, uh, with part of a, a course that, uh, of course we've talked Tell us about. a little bit about that, John. Yeah. We've talked about this with you guys and yeah, and it's a, it's a course that we're really excited about restorative driven implants. Today was the day featuring, uh, some lecture and hands-on with immediate extraction and placement of implants, how to do that, uh, followed by some pig jaw. Yeah, Wes, Wes brought it Great today, job. did an amazing Thank job. Thank you. Had some pig jaw exercises, placing implants, extracting teeth, suturing, membranes, graft containment, socket preservation. I mean... Yeah, ice cream cone ice technique. Cream cone. Yeah. Yeah. Ice, ice cream cone, cone technique. Yeah, yeah tarn out you. Yeah. We're in the lecture. You know, if you're looking for a place and you want to learn from the dental guys... How to you know understand, mm-hmm. place, restore, and implement dental implants? Look, restorative driven implants is where it's at. Yeah, that's why we we got involved with this because from the know, novice really to the to the to the intermediate, I think that's where we're yeah. trying to get this in. You're trying to get started, or or you feel like you've maybe taken courses and you and you maybe came out confused, and right. that was something we talked a lot about today. Was a lot of the confusion about first of all, what should I do? What should I buy? But also. You know, what is this really based on? Is this based on science and literature and evidence, or is this just based on this works in my hands? Right. Which you guys know we're not about that. We're about yeah. literature, evidence. So let's bring in Joel. You know, Joel, I want you to tell us just a little bit about you. Wait, wait, before, before oh, we get okay, in. Okay, okay. So, so I get to see a lot of the stuff that people do relative to uh, lectures and all this, you know, different kind of crazy stuff that's going out there. And we talked a lot about Facebook forums and all this other yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And you guys really, and I, I congratulations, you guys really brought it. I'm, I'm very... Um, uh, I mean, honestly, just pleasantly surprised to see how well you just laid everything out there relative to the basis of information that beginners should understand, where they should go next. Yeah. You know what I mean? That way it doesn't overwhelm them. Yep. Because what happens when people get overwhelmed? They're just like, yeah. they get lost and they do nothing. And they don't you know implement I mean? it, yeah. So you guys really structurally broke it down nicely for everybody to understand it, implement it, and then what's the next step? Well, that's that's what we're hoping so, for. Yeah. That's yeah. what we're hoping for. So, so that's awesome. To restorative driven implants.com. Yeah, there you go. There you go. So, so Joel, you we, we got to meet you uh, uh, back out in Arizona, right. and uh, when we were out there, and it was really we we just I want to hear a little bit just the same kind of story you told us about how you got involved in dentistry and dental implants, a little bit about your training, and, and kind of when did your when did it go from just being about dentistry to really being about implants for you? Right. 
So first and foremost, let me let's start by saying the reason I'm here is because of Craig Hines. So big shout out to Craig Hines. Uh, Craig, right. Craig, you know who you he's, are. He's, he's, a, he's watching. A, he's yeah, a listener, he's probably, right and a watcher. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, he's watching. <laughs> shout out to Craig. Yeah. yeah, and also a shout out to Michael Worley. I do courses with him in Mexico. Speaking of courses, yeah. And Honestly, then, I forgot about that, John, because yeah. Craig contacted us. Yep. And he was and, the first one and that he said, told us about Joel. You know, if you need somebody, I've got a guy. That's right. And and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna contact Brad. And at Argonne, and here, I am. And here you are. And like the Flambeau, Wisconsin. Yeah. Where they, what? How, how, how Holy much, smokes. How much, how much snows, snows outside. outside. <laughs> oh, I don't want to talk about that. That's unreal, man. So yeah. so, so tell us, the, how did you get started in all this? One more. One more oh, guy. Oh, I, okay. All right. I, I got to mention this guy. Really, I'm going to get busted. Oh. Ashraf Suaya. Right here, brother. All love. <laughs> <laughs> All love. Wow. You just got represented right there. That's right, awesome. Right. What was that? I, I'm not sure, but I, 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 I know whoever's watching that knows exactly no, what that's he, all about. He, this guy is an absolute. This is where Craig has learned from. Michael uh, Worley's learned from. Uh, oh, he's an right. absolute very cool. master. All right. Love very it. Absolute master love it. with everything he does. So he's he's phenomenal. Very he's, cool. He's like Radislaw Yadik. How do you say mm-hmm. his last name? Mm-hmm. Yadich, yeah. Yadich. Yeah. 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 Exactly. yeah. Anyway, so... My journey began, I, I call it a journey because it is a journey. You guys understand the word. Uh, it's a deep word. A lot of people say, well, it's a kind of a, a, a cliche. It, it's not a cliche. It's a journey. Mm-hmm. It really mm-hmm. is a journey. And um, my journey began back in 1989 as an Air Force dental tech. Um, I worked for the base periodontist, base prosthodontist. I loved, I loved blood and guts, and I love pros. Mm-hmm. So um, I moved out to Southern California <clears throat> and was um, working out there. I was going to school full-time, working full-time, and I got a, a phone call from a friend of mine, and she said, hey, I know somebody who's looking for a male dental assistant, right? And I said, okay, so what's the deal? Anyway, it was Dr. Peter Worley. He's a prosthodontist implant surgeon. Whoa. Stop Eight right teeth. there. Whoa. Stop right there. <laughs> yeah. Because he's, he's been the, like, primary speaker at the AO main podium yeah. several times, published yeah. a lot. Yeah. Of research. Yeah. So you got started in implants from with him, Wor- Peter Worley. Yeah. So that was back in yeah. 1991. Wow. Now yeah. at that time, that was early on in the implant world. Right. So you're placing external hex implants at Very that time. Good. We actually we had we had we this had is the 90s, right? Like we talked about today, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And I really related to what you guys were talking about. Why? Because we had three systems in the office, and forget about names. I'm yeah. Not yeah sure. Names. We had external hex. We had internal hex and we had Morse taper. Okay. Right? Morse taper for simple posterior cases. Prosthetically, much easier, right? More predictable. We had uh, uh, external hex implants for exactly multiple units, all, all on four, all on six, mm-hmm. all, all on everything we were doing back then, even before it got popular like, like it is now. And the way internal, internal hex implants were anterior aesthetic because of the lower profile of the emergence profile. Gotcha. So w- that's the way I was taught from that perspective because everything was prosthetically driven, similar mm-hmm. to what you guys are talking about. So that's the way I, my brain is wrapped around implant dentistry from the very beginning. It's not about a brand. It's not about you know this company or that company. It's about what is that <clears throat> physical feature of the implant going to do mm-hmm. for that patient, and that's really key yep. to me. Anyway, yep. if you're going to have success, you need to think about those things. Okay. So, yeah. So Worley was kind of your introduction, Mentor. and I would guess that that was a – you had to learn quickly. Because <laughs> a guy like that, I don't know him personally, but yeah. he seems like – I mean, he, he's going to make sure it's done right. Yeah, yeah. No, we, if we didn't do it right, we didn't do it at all. And, uh, yeah, I had – I first couple of years were touchy. <laughs> yeah, I bet. <laughs> I mean, chair side assisting typically – For him was different, though. Yeah. I did mm. a lot. I did a lot with stuff with him. Right. So you – when you say you did a lot, tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah. Well, back then, you got to, again, remember the time and day and age. Most of the stuff that we were doing was redos from people who were trying to do implant dentistry. who didn't So rescue know. cases. Big, big rescue cases. And what happens huh. when you tear apart? That's cases? tough, man. Exactly. Yeah. Tear it apart. You're the mechanic throwing parts out. So you're figuring it out. Back to, exactly. At, at the same time, you're learning to work with him and really learning dental implant therapy. Right. All so at the same time. That, trial it's by like fire, the, man. It's like trial really, by fire. Yeah. yeah, trial by fire and in a big way. But we didn't have all the parts and pieces as an example because we didn't have, like, for instance, the temporary cylinders that we have now. Because mm-hmm. we had to take the mounts, for instance, and prep them 
out to make temporary cylinders ourselves to, for instance, to pick up the provisionals. That's know, awesome. That's right. So. so it was a lot of basically it was being a, a sort of an engineer yeah. in a way. You were having to think about things. He was having to think about things. You were thinking about things. You were learning. He, he was learning. Yeah. As you were learning, really. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, so you're getting to see like the front lines of sort of development of product as That's well. Right. That's right. So so how did that yeah. experience turn into more from the, 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 you know, getting more involved in implant dentistry from a standpoint of companies and that kind of thing? Because of Dr. Worley. So mm. I, I, I was doing my undergrad to go to uh, dental school, which I finished everything. And he sat me down one day and he said, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> like mm. that. Because I was third by that time I, when I got in the military, I was twenty-seven. So by the time I finished everything, I was like thirty-five. Okay, somewhere around there. So thirty-five, and you were considering being a dentist, right? I, fin- I finished everything. I was ready to apply, and he sat me down and he said, "He said, look, with what you know about implants, he said, with your personality, he said, because who runs implant companies? He said, typically, uh, bean counters run right. implant companies, and this, you know, that type of thing." doesn't jive he said so go back to go back to a business school instead transfer everything over and uh, go go to business school and end up running the implant company so here mm. i am mm. you know? so I you've been in the business of implants since 1998 of, since 1998 so after kind of that pivot um y- you know that that means that you saw it kind of from the beginning really correct uh with working with people that were trained by probably a lot of the original implant placers that correct. were Directly trained from people that that started. B really worked with Branamark. Yeah, the Branamark. The Branamark few. few. Right, right. Wow. Right. When Paul Schnittman was in, the, uh, came to the office a few times, and he was a program director at Harvard, where Dr. Worley went to. So yeah, we yeah, I got to know all those people, and you know, Bob Winter was in there as well mm-hmm. uh, a little bit. Don Cornell was in the office. Okay. Mm. Um, so yeah, I, I got to sit back and watch all these guys. You've been around like the highest of qualities from the very beginning. <laughs> right, and that was my and, standards. Right. right. You set some standards from the very beginning. And one thing that you mentioned there is that you were an engineer, okay, because you all had to figure out stuff. Mm-hmm. Right. And you working with some of the, the, the innovators in the mm-hmm. industry, working with implant companies at the time. Right. How easy was it then in 91 to 97 to innovate from the chair side to actually the production line? Meaning something that you did – chair side how hard was it to get to the production line yeah that's that's a great question it wasn't necessarily easy because obviously you ha- what whatever you were doing had to work right mm-hmm. as an example so like of, repeatability and systems which is what we talked about today one of the things that actually is kind of making a comeback i heard is the what they call the cal technique from way back then which was a really cheap way to make bars and it was mm. com- 100 percent of the time completely passive Mm. Uh, versus even milling today is not exact, 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 right? There are some mill, mill, milling scenarios, depending upon the company, um, that you know, bars break, bars fracture. Because, again, wh- what's the best model? Always going to be the patient. Mm-hmm. So we actually picked up the, mo- the, uh, the cylindrical little uh, bar, cr- a chrome and cobalt bar, in the mouth. Mm-hmm. Uh, with the, there was chrome cobalt, but we had titanium cylinders on, the, on top of that. Right. So it was something that we did, and Dr. Worley actually uh, tried uh, pushing it to an implant company, and they said they didn't want it. And the reason was is because they didn't get to sell all the extra parts okay. and gold unit and castables and so forth and so on. So that's that's where that went. Hmm. So it was even then it was hard. Yeah, like, big time. So what makes a company want <clears throat> to innovate? Like what about, like, um, I mean, I guess Great like... Great question. Like what makes a company... Like that's that's the thing John and I've talked about is that Great question. the frustrations that we see with any type of product or technique and we see a problem clinically and we're like, you know, if they could do this, mm-hmm. right. it would make our life a little bit easier and you and and you kind of pass that up the chain and all that kind of thing. Sometimes right. some companies are able to 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 move, but what makes a company able to do that? Like well, li- you know, the qu- simple question is: Does it work? Does mm-hmm. it do what it's supposed to do? So one, does it work? <laughs> right. Okay. And, and so if it works, that's the check mark. It works. Right. But how well does it work? Right. You know what I mean? Because does it work in multiple people's hands? Is that what they're looking for? Right. How difficult is the application? You know, is it for the masses? Right. You know, Doctor Worley was a top one percent in the United States. You guys sure. are very adept at what you do. He's very advanced. So. 
picking the bar up, uh, looting something in the mouth is not that easy to do. So also the, they said, no, we don't, we're not interested. So well, we see, we hear a lot of people though talk about one of the changes in implant companies over the last, I don't know, 20 years yeah. has been from a lot more of that kind of cottage industry where it was people yeah. like a Peter Worley who was doing, you know, kind of innovating in his own office because yeah. he had to out of necessity. Right. And then the companies kind of responded to that, but it sent, we hear people saying, well, you know, companies are getting so big, they're getting so maybe marketing driven or more marketing corporate, driven. maybe yeah. it's corporate, I don't know, yeah. Yeah. That, it, that they're turning into more of, well, we don't necessarily want to change, we don't want to, res- we're not, you hear a lot of, especially surgeons who place for a very, very, very long time say, companies don't listen to us anymore. Right. Do you think that's true? Um, it's all about the numbers. You know, and one of the things I really enjoy about Argon, not to get into that, but Argon is is they're they're proactive in the sense of they look at things and anticipate. That's the key word. They anticipate the process and sit there and go, hmm, how can I make this better? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Whereas mm-hmm. other companies are like, hey, let's look about this and see if it fits and then sit there and, okay, and then how can we sell it? It's not just about the number. All these, what I was, my patent answer to a lot of people is, these parts and pieces affect people's lives. Why don't we want it to be the best? Mm. You know what I mean? From the mm-hmm. patient and the doctor's that, standpoint. That's exactly correct. But it, ultimately, the patient, because who ends up sure. always paying for the mistakes? The patient. The patient. The right. patient does. So, so basically, again, you're saying that that uh, the company can look at it a couple different ways. <clears throat> they can look at it as how much of this can we sell? Yeah. Uh, or they can look at okay. it as you know, is this the really the best thing that we're right, doing? Right. Do you feel like there's been a shift? toward more of just the marketing side of things yes. overall? Has there been more of a push? Especially within the last, in my opinion, the last five to seven years, there's a lot of this stuff that's just, they just put it out there and see what sticks. Why, what's driving that? If you if you can weigh in, I don't know. Facebook groups, I would say, the number one. Number Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa, you're saying Facebook groups are driving sales? Yeah, I would say so, yeah. Wow. Tell me more about that. Yeah. Because, I mean, think about it. it they, they create momentum, but the question is, is it good momentum? I, I, oh. Here, here's a great example. John. Oh, oh, yeah. Here we go. Well, hold on. Let's, 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 <laughs> here we go. Well, so, it's like what I do. No, no, no. <laughs> no, so is it good? So keep, I want you to keep on that train of thought. So is it good momentum? So what do you mean by that? Mm-hmm. Great clinical example is there's these, you know, new implants out, and they say, oh, do, do the patient in one whack, give it to, you know, give them the immediate provisional like everybody wants with the all in four. But they're these long, super long. They're a little bit bigger than mini implants, but it has like an auger type implant I, I, or auger type blades. I forgot the name of them, but they're actually bendable. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You bend the heck out of them. You put them in all sorts of directions. Not that you're paying attention to biology or the bone or anything like that. Right. You know what I mean? And just load the implants immediately. It's like, come on, really? Are we really going there? You know what I mean? So you're saying is they're doing it because it's it's cool. It's quick. It's fast. It's like it's it's a quick fix. Everybody yeah. wants that quick fix. And it's fix. something you can post on a Facebook <clears throat> page. And that gets and every, and people go, oh look at that. So it's an oh look at me. It's yeah, a look that's at me. It. And that's this is it. the thing that we oh, we man. we really gets us and it and it's me, man. Because Tell I I, I think there's a lot of look at me stuff that's, that's going it. on. That's it. Because you know, 20 years ago there was no way people could look at you unless you published in a peer reviewed journal. That's right. And you better have your stuff together so, before you publish because if you're going to get ripped apart. That's it. And if you go to a major meeting and you present trash, you're yeah. going to get called out. But nowadays, you can just go, oh, I'm just going to put this up on Facebook. No problem. And, and so now look you're at me. a genius. And, and, yeah. and, and, and now I'm an expert. Now they, I'm an expert because look at what happened. <clears throat> How many times did that happen? One time, right? One time. Yeah. <laughs> well, I even love, you know, we, we love the Academy of Vossi Integration. Everybody knows that. Yeah. We were out there several years ago when a very famous uh, guy, Lyndon Cooper, yeah. at the at the uh, AstroTech at the time, yeah. years ago, yeah. was presenting on full arch zirconia. And at the time, it was very controversial yeah. about whether it worked. And he gets out there and presents a case. And literally, a guy stands up in the audience in the middle of his presentation and says, all right, so uh, how many of those have you done? Right now, tell me. Mm-hmm. And how many of those are fractured? Mm-hmm. Right now, tell me that. And he's, and he's like, I want to make any residents in here. Can you verify what he's saying is true? So he's getting called out on the podium. Nice. But on Facebook, that's not, that doesn't happen. No. Because you got people who just go, oh, that's <clears throat> cool. I call it the car wreck mentality. Oh. <laughs> 
So right. exp- expand on that. Yeah, <laughs> tell me more about the car wreck. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? The car wreck mentality is what? Everybody, you know, where they're driving along the freeway, and what happens when they see a car wreck? They're like... <laughs> they... It's long neckers, John. And they yeah. slow yeah. down and mess up Gawking. everybody else yeah. behind them, yeah. right? Not even paying attention to anybody behind them. But what are they really doing? They're hosing up the whole, obviously, uh, highway system in and of itself, how it's supposed to work. But everybody wants to see the car wreck. They mm-hmm. want to see the, the, the end effect, the, the, there's the bodies laying on the side of the road and so forth. Not that it's going to do them any good, but it's like, come on, man. You know, let's just, just you're, you're hosing up the whole system. Let's keep going. Let's keep things moving in a positive direction instead of gawking, you know mm. what I mean? But it's that immediate, again, gratification that everybody wants to see nowadays. So mm. is it necessarily good? No. The more gory it is, people want to see it, and I get it. You know, it's the the, the society we're in right now. You know? So but number one, Facebook groups are driving. A lot of it. Some, some of the it. changes. Yeah, some of the changes. Of yeah. Okay, mm. so they're chasing some of that because of what they see. Yeah. What's the number number two? Money. That's it, baby. Mm. Right there. Quick, fast, quick, fast. Now, what happens is with something that's quick and fast, typically ends up either being cheap or, uh, you know, not. What's so, that whole thing? So, wait a minute. Manufacturing standpoints, like uh, how fast I can manufacture it? Or? How fast I can get the patient. Because why? What's hot right now? What, and why Needs. is all on four yeah. hot? Because, yeah. you well, the patient, well, they, they get their teeth immediately. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, okay, they lost their teeth their teeth over 20 years why do they want them back in a day i get the immediate mm. function aspect but is it the best thing that they're doing for them mm. long term or, or are you creating a dental cripple so by cutting ha- away all that bone do you have that opinion because of all of the um rescue cases that you had to do in the 90s well and today because you know, i'm involved obviously with it now and I, all the stuff i get to see <clears throat> a great example uh, you know not to jump on the all on four negative bandwagon but i'm not a fan why? You have this patient. They sell him this treatment plan. Great. They sell him the treatment plan. They see them, look, we can do it in a day for you. They focus on the quick fix. We can do it in a day for you. You'll come in. You're going to leave with teeth. Okay, great. <clears throat> but how much vertical bone do they have to cut away? Mm-hmm. Typically, a good amount, right? Because oh, yeah. the patient has, has a lot of times, apparently, apparently involved hopeless teeth, but that doesn't mean they're, they're, they're missing a ton of bone. They're missing some bone, but typically you have to cut five, seven, sometimes even 10 millimeters of bone away. So what, they cut all that bone away, and what happens to all that tissue? Zip, 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 right? Cut all that tissue away. Every, you guys taught it today. What happens to an implant that doesn't have keratinized gingiva around it? There's no seal. So nobody talks about the unattached gingiva around these implants that are eventually, they're, they're, they're not going to fail, or rather, they're not if they're going to fail, it's when they're going to fail. Mm-hmm. So the patients don't know that. So it's it's a bit of a you know smoke and mirrors, so in my opinion. I think there can be. I think that uh, if they say you know that if if all you have is a hammer, that everything is a nail. That's it. And there's certainly a lot of that that's going around now. I think there are times that that a cheaper treatment approach is the best. Absolutely. You know, and there are times when it's for atrophic uh, mandibles and maxillas. Right. right. Or 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 a patient that is 70 years old. Yeah. Versus a patient that is 30 years old. Right. And those discussions that are harder to have That's than right. what they're being had oftentimes. That's it's right. a, it's a it's like, "Oh, well we have a solution for you." That's right. Instead of this is a patient. I want right. to branch I off a little bit more on this because right. I think that that we've talked a little bit on the show recently about the car wreck mentality, <laughs> the, yeah, yeah. the super sexy, cool procedures, what the cool kids are doing, <laughs> and, um, and and it looks cool, and it does attract a lot of <clears throat> likes and and comments on the forums, right. and 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 what that does is that creates a false sense of mm, maybe not gratification, but like. I'm kind of bored with what I'm doing. I want to jump over here and try something different. And when I don't really know the whole protocol or the whole way of doing things. Exactly. But I want to go down you you, you I want to go down this road because we talk a lot about full arch, John. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And because you and I do a lot of full arch stuff and we've had excellent clinicians on the show that do full arch right. Okay. But if do you think that we have oversold Taking out teeth. No doubt. Hmm. No doubt. No so, doubt. So what are you saying? What have you seen in your career that says, hey, we need to hang on to teeth a little bit longer? Let me, let me quote Dr. Worley. At some point in time, the tooth becomes more of a liability than an asset. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. 
And there, that's when you have to make the decision, right? But do you hold on to periodontally involved teeth for, you know, 20 years when you know they're ultimately they're going to fail? You want to keep some, some bone around there. So you treat it more so from a tooth-by-tooth tooth perspective versus a full arch, I mean, if they still have somewhat healthy bone. But at the same time, I mean, again, we're looking at, again, I, I'm very emphatic towards the patient, empathetic towards the patient. So I always look at it from their perspective. What would I want in their shoes? That's the way I look at things. And that's the way I still look at things from every time I go assist or do whatever in an office. And I just try to think about what's best for them, period. Mm -hmm. And secondarily, the doctor. Because ultimately, if it's best for the patient, then it's going to be best for the doctor. So what you're saying is keeping teeth sometimes is harder, but we do need to kind of cut loose of some teeth. But no we've doubt. got to know when. No doubt. But we've oversold it as just slick them. <laughs> slick them. I like that. Yeah. Slick yeah. Slick them <clears throat> and put some implants in. That's it. And do full arch. Yeah. And and you're done. And you're, and you're sexy. done. Right. And you're done. <laughs> and, that, and that's maybe the thing that gets to me the most <clears throat> is the idea that that you're done right. because you're not done. No, you're married to that. Now. Right. You're not done. And, and things need to be, I think the best word we try to use is revised. Yeah. You know, occasionally when, especially if you're doing those types of treatments on a 30 year old or a 40 year old, 40 year old patient and you're saying to the patient, Oh, you're done. You know? And I think that again, you're removing a bunch of bone, a bunch of tissue. You're definitely not done. But that's where the patients do think when they spend $50,000 on full, full upper, full lower, right? And, but they're both all in four. They think they're done. Right, and I think that's a problem. They're just beginning well, I, with the negative maintenance perspective. That's a, exactly that's a, right. It's a big problem. <clears throat> now, I, I want to I want to go maybe a little bit more since you, you've had this <clears throat> career with where you've seen so much change, mm. um, and we we're talking a little bit about innovation. Mm. What what are some innovations that you've seen in the implant world that you feel are more R and D and quality have really improved outcomes versus this just marketing? Right. Great question. Um, I'm a big connection guy. I, I, I matter of fact, a, lo a lot of the people that I've done courses with, I always do what, what I call the physics, physics and biology section of it. Because again, if, if something has a physical design or physical feature, it has a biological outcome. So let's start way back when external hex, right? How come, matter of fact, it's great. You mentioned the AO and I remember it was, I was specifically at the AO and, and I was talking to a doc and he says, well, all implants are the same. I said, oh, so you still place external hex implants, huh? Like that. And he goes, no. Well, why would I place that, right? I said, exactly. Because it's, it's a bad connection. We know about the micro gap. We know about the micro movement. We know about the screw fracturing and everything like that. So ex it's, it's moved from external hex. As you guys know, it, it, there was a competition between the Swiss and the Swedes, right? The Swiss had the Morse taper. The Swedes had the external hex. So... But then internal hex got involved. So now we've, had, we've seen the compilation, compilation or combination of the best features that work together. And that's, again, why I respect uh, what Argon has done, putting the best features of all these different things that we've seen over time that actually works, mm. but preserves crustal bone. And the biggest thing for me is the, is the conical connection. Mm. I should say the Morse taper. It's not just – even that is a term that people overuse today, conical right. connection. Because right. Well, what type of connection is it? Right. What degree of conical connection is it? Yep. You know, I just saw a herd. I'm not a big podcaster, so you guys, props to you guys for doing what you're doing and doing it the way you guys do it, sticking to the literature and so forth. But um, I heard a, a podcast recently, a prosthodontist talking about their 11.5 degree taper on Neodent, just bragging about it. And I'm sitting there going, really? 11.5? You're bragging about that? Because, I mean, again, the wider the connection, the wider the physical connection, the more movement you have. So a lot of people don't understand 11.5 degree is only half that connection. Mm. Now you got to put the other half in there. It's 22. Or it's 23. 23. 23. Yeah. Right. So same thing with, you know, 11 degree connections. That's 22. Now you go to uh, uh, Strawman, which is 8. Now that's 16. The others are, you know, so forth. So our argon is 1.5, so that's 3. Hmm. Wow. That's pretty parallel, which means it's very retentive. So that's ideal. So micro movement is, is what I've seen over the years is a prosthetic killer. Mm. Nobody, nobody talks about it, actually. No, nobody wants to talk about it that much, that micro movement, which is key. It's a prosthetic killer. Definitely. So you feel like the connection, and we've talked about this before, that we, we've seen this sort of you know, combination of, of ideas over time yeah. from companies that, 
some I think a lot of them realized that they didn't really have a great connection right. uh, because things weren't working as well right. and other companies were getting ahead in some ways. Right. So they kind of rushed to say, oh, we, we've got that too right. because they know that it is important. Right. But sometimes that's actually, like you say, it's it's just a marketing thing to say right. we have a deep conical connection or it's a conical, conical connection. connection. What is it? Versus, right, actually the real thing that was engineered right. versus just that's it. We, we put a bevel on it so that we could call it that because we don't want to lose market share. Right. And re-engineering an entire line, that's hard. Right. That takes a lot of money and that's effort, it. and then you have to change things and change parts and pieces. Right. And But I guess that's where we're – we feel like – Wes and I feel like that's where – why um, maybe we're seeing a change in these smaller companies where they're able to – make changes if they see and react to the market. Yeah, if they see yeah. that there's a clinical benefit <clears throat> yeah. from that. And big companies, it's hard. Yeah. To well, turn the ship, right? They've sold that particular idea. So how can they come back and say, well, we were wrong? They they, they don't want to admit their mistakes. And I, I, I don't agree with that. If something's bad, <clears throat> then fix it. Admit it and move on. You know what I mean? And it's, it's pretty simple. But that's my philosophy. <laughs> you know? That's a very reasonable philosophy. You know, we we wanted to kind of let you weigh in on a, que- a question that we've asked a lot, uh, which is service versus price wow. with implants. Oh, yeah. Because there's, again, another change has been price pressures. Big and time. And that's time. changing the industry. But it's what I call a race to the bottom. Mm. Yeah. So so I want you to talk more about that. What does that mean to Great. you? Great. So that guy I was talking to about at the, at the AO talking about the, ex, the external hex implant because they're like, oh, all the implants are the same. I should only pay 100 bucks for, for an implant. Okay, what kind of car do you drive, dude? You know what I mean? Is it a Mercedes? Well, of course. Ah. <laughs> okay. So uh, race to the bottom means are you really doing yourself and your patient a disservice by always going to the cheapest, cheapest, cheapest? Seriously, because on your on your message, what I, I love to talk, talk to doctors about this because I put it back on them. They're the ones making the decisions, ultimately affecting their patients' lives. I say, look, dude, you on your on your machine, it says you oh you only focus on high quality products and you use the best of this and you best of that on your on hold machine. But are you really doing that? And I just, I just shut up. Are you really doing that? No, they're not. They're going to they're they're racing to the bottom. They're they're trying to find the cheapest. There is a, a huge infusion of. Pakistani, Chinese type stuff on the market as well, and they're just going they're eBay type type stuff, and everybody's going to the to uh, the cheapest, cheapest, cheapest. And I just don't agree with that. Don't get me wrong; price effective is great if you can have a product that's price effective, mm. but still giving you everything that you want. Awesome, more power to them. But you don't have to pay four hundred bucks an implant to have that. So that is the game, and they want to change the game by saying, "Well, you shouldn't be charging that much money," which most of the big five companies do. But the others are trying to be at the hundred dollar range, and it's like, I mean, you're giving everything away. How so, can you, you know, operate that way? I, mm-hmm. I used to have a thought, you know, <clears throat> I've, I've placed everything from, you know, a hundred and, you know, eighty dollar implant all the way up to, you know, two hundred and or no, four hundred and fifty dollar implants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay? right, right. And um, sorry, yeah, four hundred fifty dollar implants and. Right. And I feel like that at one time. That's what I call the Mercedes mentality. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. the car wreck mentality and your Mercedes yeah. mentality. Yeah. Right. At one time, you know, I would have said, you know what, I feel good about spending the 450 because I felt like it wasn't because so much of my representation, not that I didn't love my reps. All right. Um, but but I but I felt like that I was investing in research. Mm. You know? I felt like that the companies that were behind these superior products per se, or these, you know, products that have been around for years, maybe they were behind innovation in a bigger way, even yet now. What do you think? Do you think that there's still innovation going on? You, we talked about a little bit about just briefly a minute ago that university um, studies and peer reviewed journals and things, how that means a lot because Facebook is not peer reviewed. It's not, you know, looked over, but what it comes down to is somebody that's done research on thousands, multi-center studies, and it takes a lot of money. I think one of the studies that I quoted in here costs $2.2 million. 
Now, I'm sorry, Joel, but a small company <clears throat> can't afford to do research like that. Right. Unless they just get a, a handout from a university and we get a grant. Right. And but if it's is that is that a problem? Great question. Hmm. You know, a lot of the reason, uh, not necessarily research, the ideas for the research is coming from the clinicians, right? Mm -hmm. And how the, how they can uh, come up with a better way to do a to get a particular outcome. And I think that's where a lot of I'll use the word the uh, innovations are coming from nowadays is from your higher end clinicians, and, you know, pushing the envelope constantly. Like Dr. Worley, he, he pushed the envelope a lot. I think he did the very first. Uh, yeah, where we extracted number eight, uh, use the tooth as the actual provisional. Mm. You no, know, he was the first one to publish on that, and it was it was super cool to see because you use the patient's own tooth, obviously. So it was, it was nice. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that type of innovation is 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 and ideas are key to the to the companies. But you don't necessarily have to break the bank to do it. You know what I mean? I don't. You know, it takes a few million dollars. You know, if you're the big companies, but there's other ways to do that mm -hmm. as well. You know what I mean? So do you feel like, though, that research still matters, though? Sure, sure. Okay. So if research matters, then... then Reproducibility matters. Okay. <laughs> so basically, one person does research does not mean that it's gospel yet. That's right. It just means that we've done it once. Now let's see if somebody else can reproduce the same to, thing. It has to be multi -centered. See, John right. and I talking about that is that, you know, we always like like to turn our heads like at some of these studies and say, you know, that's interesting because it's one or two years it had been looked at. But it's the five-year stuff, the 10-year stuff that really makes you want to think about changing your practice. Yeah. And um, that's it. Right? Yeah. 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 Well, I, I work with Howie Gluckman, and we do courses here in the United States. And um, wait a minute, How, Howie Gluckman. Yeah, another no, name. No drop. small name. No small name, though. Tell me a little bit about Howie. I will, but he. <laughs> I love because he's a published author. I mm -hmm. and he's phenomenal. He's such a great guy, and he's he's a true educator. I can't wait for you guys to meet him. But what I love about the his his uh, uh, course is the first, honestly. 20 to 30 minutes of his course. He just kind of starts going off on his bit of a tirade, yeah. right? And he, and he, can I say a cuss word on here or no? We try to keep it clean. Yeah. But well, it's, it's not but a bad, it, but bad if, word. But if it, no, go it's for it. It's all right, word. it's all right. He just said in his, in his South African accent, let's not bullshit ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> let's not bullshit ourselves. <laughs> you know, I, I love how he says that because it's true. And it's, uh, he, he says, look, the courses he teaches, and he sits there and he says, "Look, if I can, the only one, I'm the only one who can do this procedure. It's not a reproducible procedure, so why am I teaching it?" Oh, I love that. So he wants Man, everybody to teach at his le rather to Dude. execute pro uh, protocols at That's his level. Exactly so right. he breaks everything down for you know the novice. To be able to do what he does yeah. if you, in his educational course. That's yeah. that's a good teacher that's because true if you can't break down the Period. complex and make <clears throat> it simple and repeatable and systematic. That's it. Yeah. You got a problem. Right. Then it's just Facebook. Yeah. In a way. Because, you know, right. because you're going, hey, in my hands. Sexy I, stuff. Yeah, right. Yeah, John, yeah, you know, right. we saw stuff yesterday on a forum that you all probably know of. And it's like, huh? How can you show that? And it's not that's cool but what are you driving you know what you're driving you're driving a company right or you're driving yourself or yourself yeah, you yeah. know and and you're really looking at it as who might have bought into that company right right, right exactly yeah. exactly and i and i think that that's when i hear that you know that's that's what it's all about it's being able to say if you can't if you can't give somebody a, a cookbook yeah and and have it work yeah. and, and now there are beginner and advanced things that you need right. to have skills that are more further along in order to be able to accomplish, and we all understand that. But again, the residency format should be no different. You know, in other words, yeah. in a residency, no doubt, they give you a cookbook and they say, "This is how we do things," and you're going to do 500 of them, and then you're going to be good. And that's what you guys did today. And yeah, I, I, first time I saw that that uh, uh, manual that you guys gave out. It's beautiful. Yeah, and there's really no mag nice. there's no magic dust. Right. You know, there's no magic dust. We sprinkle on, and we go, "Oh well, that's the, my thing that right. I came up with," and you know, one day you'll be able to do that. Exactly. No. Here. Go ahead. Yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I mean, tap yourself on the back at the same time you're talking about it, right? Yeah, because it's it's really tough to because you can you're selling you're selling yourself, but you're not really selling. And that's uh, what Howie does not do. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's so all Howie about the education. Yeah, he's all about the education. <clears throat> yeah. And uh, yeah. you know that 
I think for our listeners that are listening to this right now, let's pare this down for you. What we're talking about here is how one to work inside the world of dentistry and innovation Mm -hmm. and still feel good about what you're doing for your patient, that you're not just being sold something that is just marketed. Right. Right. You're being, you're, you're actually using something in a patient's mouth that has been repeated. It's been researched. It doesn't just work well in just one person's hands. Right. It works well in multiple hands. Right, want, John? Yeah, so absolutely. Pair, pair down a little bit more than absolutely. that. Absolutely. And I, and I think that that's, that's what the whole goal of, of education should be. Um, now, I want to just ask, I want to kind of change topics a little bit before we kind of bring this thing home. Yep. As a, as a, a, a representative that, that has seen, again, so much change, I love talking to people that have perspective of being able to say, look, I've been around. I've seen things. How is it going into offices now in terms of what you're seeing and how you're having to educate a doctor or how you're having to present things compared to what it was when you began? You know, what are some of the challenges you have now that you didn't have then? It's much tougher, quite honestly. Why, and why is that? Because people, honestly, they don't care. Honestly, oh, a, a lot of it, a, a lot of people that I see, they, they just don't care about the connection that they place. They, they, they place the quick, fast, whatever is cheapest, whatever they have on their, on their shelves, and they don't think about the long-term effects because it's quick, 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 quick fix. You quick think money. that's the same with, like, all... And I'm being blunt. Do you obviously. feel like that's the same with all generations of dentists? Like, do you feel like even older dentists are becoming more that way, or is it just more the younger dentists the that are newer? older generation is becoming that way. I've noticed that. Now, I, you got to think about it and put it in the reality realistic terms. How much is dental school? And this is what Dr. Worley sat me down and he sat there and said, dude, by the time you finish, you know, dental school, you're going to be $300,000 in debt. You're already 35 years old. He sat there and said, hmm, let's think about, you know, this from a perspective of time. You know, and he said, maybe by the time you retire, you would have recouped your investment, you know, as far as uh, everything you would have had to pay for dental school. And I said, dude, that's a pretty big, yeah. I, never, I never broke it down like that. Yeah. And a lot of people haven't either. So they're coming out of dental school for Five hundred thousand dollars in debt. There was a guy on I don't know who it was because nobody on Dental Town puts their na- name on there. But it was what would it say? Five. Uh, I forgot his, his his handle or avatar. I think it's called. But it was he he mentioned he was five hundred thousand dollars in debt. Mm. Didn't know what to go. Did, didn't know which <clears throat> direction to go. So these guys are just looking for the big ticket items, the big big ticket. Uh, and that's not how you build your business. That's not how you build your brand. Short term, it may short, work. Short term, it may work. But, but long then term, you're going to start seeing problems. It's karma. It's yeah, karma. it comes around, Dude, doesn't it? I'm telling you. And so you think the, a big reason for the change is the debt and the cost. Big time. And people are just trying to make money right now. So you think right DSOs now. are driving some of that? Yeah, no doubt. Because they're driving down the prices, so people people feel like they got to compete, and what's what's going to happen when you compete? It's a race to the bottom, you know, like that. So what do we do about it? Great question. Focus on quality. Always focus on quality. You never see Rolls Royce uh, ha- any commercials of uh, on, t- uh, on TV or anything like that for Rolls Royce, right? Mm. Not once. Have, have you ever seen a commercial for Rolls Royce? But yet people buy them, still buy them from that particular level, right? If you if you if you get in the mud with a pig, right, you're a pig. You become a pig. Say it's the same perspective in the sense if you, if you go cheap, 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 always you're gonna you're gonna. Okay, it's so just a race to the bottom. I get what you're saying. I I totally get what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Okay, but here's this brass tax is. Okay, all right. You're a chair side assistant. Yeah, working <clears> with me. Yeah, I just graduated dental school three years ago. Yeah, I went and got training with implants. Yeah, okay, trained up. Ready to go. I'm starting yeah. to do simple, abundant bone, healed yeah. ridge, doing a meeting extraction, meeting place. Cool. Nothing crazy. Nothing cool. crazy. You're working with me. You're my chair side assistant. Cool. All right. How do you, as an assistant and a dentist, work together to sell quality and service over the price? Okay. Because if we're doing quality, you, Joel and Wes, okay. And we're, we're selling our service, yep. our care, and we're not caring about price. Yep. What about the consumer today is going to allow us not to have to lower our fees? I was, always, I was also the treatment coordinator. So I, you know. So tell me, and, how, tell me how you and I would work together. How, all, would, how would we do that? Tell, tell our about, listeners what, what they need to look for in a team that sells what we don't want. 
Okay. I want to sell what we want, Great which question. is quality and and service, not price. Great because question. we've talked about price being the problem. Now tell me how you would want your practice to run. It is always how you lay it out to the patient and educate the patient as well as the energy that you have to the patient. If you come across too aggressive, like, no, no, this is what you need to do, and you're, you, you always have to have the ultimate benefit of the patient in mind long term. So always, you the came key a, is always long term. So back up there a minute. You said you come across too aggressive. You can't. Right. So give me an example of how, how, what do you mean? Like, I know you mean aggressive, but how would you come across as a, a advocate with the patient? Focus on the long-term aspect of the patient's be, uh, overall health benefits. Right. It's really that simple. Uh, I, I, it's, when, you break, when you ultimately break it down is, is do you sincerely care about the long-term outcome right. of what's happening for your patient, not right. just the quick fix, long term. As an example, one thing that I heard Frank Spears say that we always did uh, anyway, so it was nothing new to me, but everybody was like, whoa, wow. And they said, um, he, Frank said, Spears said, if you don't have uh, patient models, then you might as well not even be doing implant dentistry. Mm-hmm. And, and it's powerful because <clears throat> it's absolutely correct. Buy, tell a lab, hey, you know what, Mr. Lab, I have... Uh, you know, I did a three-unit bridge here. Uh, can you duplicate that case for me and actually have an actual functioning bridge on new parts and pieces? Yes, you're going to have to pay for it again. You know what I mean? I see but, what you're saying. Right. We do it all the time in our office. Oh, yeah. Right. So you're saying have a physical model. Say this is physical a bridge, model. and you can take that bridge off, and you show two prep teeth. The actual teeth as well as the actual implant parts and pieces. So right. you're going to have to buy the model, and it's going to be a little bit expensive, but yeah. you have to invest in the... In, Three, in four hundred bucks. That's it. Yeah. That's a good way, and I think it's a good practical way, again, for our listeners to kind of say, okay, how do we how do we start thinking about, again, spending a little money, spending yeah. a little bit more time uh, to just get your patients maybe closer to feeling like it's about them that's and it. it's not about you. So I, I want to just, you know, that's we've been it. talking a lot about st- some of the issues, yeah. some of the problems. I want to I want to kind of bring it home by asking the question, why are you excited about dentistry? Why are you excited about the future? Tell me about that. Because that's a great, great. You guys ask him really introspective questions, man. <laughs> yeah, because that's what we we really are. We want yeah. dentistry to be yeah. fun. It's yeah. amazing. And yeah. you seem excited about it. Yeah. Why are you excited uh, about it? Because I, I love what I do. I'm very lucky. I'm very blessed to have worked for Dr. Worley for that many years and him directing me in the way that he did. But I, me actually listening to him and doing something about it, which is ultimately, you know what? People are, for the most part, great people, right? There's some people out there that just quick, quick, quick. But what's, what's really exciting to, to me is the technology that we have nowadays to do things better, to, that, that much better than we had in the 90s. What's your most exciting piece of technology right now you're excited about? Oof. Jeez. <laughs> Come on, man. Give me Too many good stuff. Uh, honestly, for, for, I'm, always, I'm always back always back down to the physical aspect. What's the fir- very first thing that matters, uh, which is the implant in the bone. Right. And honestly, here's a great example uh, w- because, again, I'm a historical perspective. I, I, I love hi- history because if we're, we need to know where we're going. We need to look back at where we've been, right? So look at— Did you at- listen to my lecture? No. <laughs> <laughs> so series, you mean today? Se- no, series yeah. one, module one. Yeah, 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 yeah that online I did. module, because I talk about you got to know where you come from. Right, exactly. Yeah. And uh, let me pick on some different companies, can I? I'm mm-hmm. not sure. I think you can. I think I, you there's can. nothing wrong with that. We're not. A, we're, we're not. We're not. I mean, we'll t- we're just okay, saying cool. what we think. You know. Yeah. So if we, we if we go back way, way back in history, and this was actually the 80s. So again, back to 80s, early 90s. There was a company called Minimatic that had, which it wasn't called Bicon back then, but had the Bicon type implant, right? Mm. And everybody, it's in that's a niche product, super niche product. Why? Because it's a three degree three degree Morse taper, without an internal hex. Right. Yeah. No screw. No screw. So you tap, you tap, tap your, everything tap into your place. In. Yep. Now everybody brags about the more taper, more taper, more taper. But if you look how deep they place the implant, mm. right? That's another um, what is the word um, protocol difference as far as different implant systems. Sure. And but yet you you can't argue the results on top. So you look at the sloping shoulders. You get to look at the more taper. You look at the threads on the implant. But you still go, well, it's really not threads. You tap the implant into place. So when I Thanks. So again, to, to Craig Hines, and he, he called me up. He said, dude, have you seen Argon? I'm like, no, man. I see. He said, you should check it out. So I, I 
quick jump on the, uh, on the computer and looked at it, and I, I immediately saw their implant design. I was like, you know what I mean? And it, it has the best of all worlds in one, and that's what we need to look at relative to the bone first because everything revolves around the root replacement, right? So if we have the right design with a 1.5-degree taper, the sloping shoulders, the compressive threads on top, the aggressive apical threads on the bottom, the domed uh, aspect of the apex, all those different things affect the surrounding, uh, the surrounding bone structure, obviously, which then affects your, as you guys said it today, what? The tissue is your issue, but the bone sets a tone, right? So if, the, if you have the bone, you're going to have the tissue, keratinized gingiva, then just builds from there. So it's, it's, it's really So technologically-wise, uh, nice. you're excited about this implant, uh, right? Uh, <clears throat> the very first thing, here's, here's quote. The very, <laughs> I went to a flu to Wisconsin. This is before you were hired. That's right. Flew to Wisconsin. Talked to Brad, or, um, introduced myself. We were, we were BSing about trucks, me and Brad, first, because I saw this big truck down yeah, there. Yeah, he, he like, drives a big old I got a, do- I got a Dodge 350. Oh, yeah. Dude, I got a four-horse trailer, so I'm sitting there going, okay. Yeah. Anyway, so we were talking about trucks, and I'm like, I said, let me ask you a question. I said, how in the hell did you guys put an internal hex on a three degree more. <laughs> yeah. That was my exact words. Yeah. And he just kind of sat, sat back and smiled. And I'm like, yeah, we did, Dude. didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously it takes three times as long to manufacture. Three times as long to manufacture. That, right? That's the difference. So Is it's it, not quick what's fast. quick and fast? An internal hex. All right, so give me another one. That's your what makes you excited. Yeah, about we're, and we're limited on time. So yeah. let's let's try yeah. to like Ooh, condense man. it. Let's yeah. try to condense it. Yeah. Uh, another one. But b- product? No, no, maybe not. Just something that's making you excited. Something that's making you excited. Like, get you up in the morning and say, man, this is amazing. This is what I love about dentistry. Okay. I'll I'll, I'll throw out another, uh, what's it called, shout out to my buddy, uh, Arian Deutsch in Phoenix. I met Arian Mm. Deutsch uh, about four or five years ago. Telescopic copings to yeah. me. Oh my goodness. We're going to be (laughs) interviewing. (laughs) We can't, we're not going to reveal the whole thing, but. We have a big interview coming up talking to somebody at Spear about that exact topic and their protocol for using Deutsch's uh, telescopic code. Nice. We, we are really pumped about that. I didn't that. know that. Yeah, yeah it's coming. It's I didn't coming. know that. Yeah, we didn't know. <laughs> it didn't I didn't know that. That's uh, an interesting protocol. It's an yeah. interesting protocol. It's very so interesting protocol. you're as excited about that as we are. Because well, because it changes everything for oh, the better for the patient. Yeah. Let's see, all yeah. on four hmm, versus the telescopic. <laughs> right. Let me think about that. Yeah, I'm going to go with the telescopic. But it's hard. It's, it's very really difficult. not that difficult well, if you follow the well, if you the way follow the, the way yeah, Arians, if you follow the protocol the way Arians yeah. broken it down because it's all about the pickup. Well, I'll tell you it's what, all about it, the it is, it is, and but I but I mean it's it's one of those things that again I guess what I'm, I should say it this way, it's not hard if you follow the protocol. Mm. Okay, the mm. problem is you said it earlier, picking things up in the mouth, you know, picking up bars in the mouth. You don't even people don't even know what a bar is or how implant connections work and. We want them to do something like that. For that person, it's hard. Yeah. So and, and so before it's just, we go down that rabbit yeah, hole, yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, so we got to be careful. We got to wrap it up. Here's the thing: is that what I, <clears throat> I think is awesome here is that one, you have passion. I can tell that. Yeah. We like people with passion. And when we first met, you we were like, "Wow, this is amazing." You know a lot of people. You've worked with a lot of people. Yeah. I mean, my goodness, some of the things that we really are sure. interested in right now, you're interested in, and that's what gets us going on our show, and. I want to say uh, thank you. I know you're a part of the Dental Crafters Network yeah. being at Argonne, and they're part of they're our show sponsor uh, yeah. for, t- for tonight, and I really appreciate the Dental Crafters Network uh, coming on board and sponsoring the dental guys. Yep. And so um, if you're interested in learning more about them, there's a link in the show description down below. You can go and, and call up. If you want to talk to Joel, they'll give you his number. He can talk to you about, you know, Argonne Dental Implants, Small, agile company, and uh, this is the implant that John and I use. We're not afraid to tell you that. Yeah, and we're not paid by them to say that either. Oh, my goodness. You know? Yeah, like, you sponsor the show. You guys think that that's a lot. Of, yeah, that's not they sponsor the show, and that's it. That's it. Yeah, you know? they give so it. They, they, help us to, they help us to pay for our video editing. They pay for our video <laughs> editing. Okay? Yeah, but, I, but, I, but I'm going to interrupt you guys for a second. But I gotta, Seriously, i got to give it up to you guys, because I, I, this is the second time I met you. You guys are principally based. Mm-hmm. You're principally mm-hmm. oriented, and that's... A breath of fresh air oh, in well, the thank industry. You. Well, good because I'm telling you, I've seen all the other stuff, and I'm sitting there going, "God, man, why can't people see through this dude's BS?" Yeah, right. but yet you, yet you guys are you want to do things for the right reason, and I respect that. I work with a lot of different, you know. I'll give you a, a real quick another shout out. My buddy uh, in Denver, Aldo Leopardi. He's yeah. a prosthodontist. He's legit. He will not. <laughs> 
compromise his principles. Yeah. We, they're name yeah. dropping. Seen him like speak crazy. before. But dude, this he's, is a, it's awesome. it's great. You know, I love, it. I love those kind of well, people. I want to, you know I, mean? I want to wrap it up by saying, first of all, thank you for being with us today. It's yeah. been awesome thank to you, get Joel. to talk to you. I know you guys that are listening to this or watching this can see and hear the passion that Joel's got for not only for dentistry, but for this company, for this implant. Yeah. And, you know, again, this is the kind of thing that, you know, yeah, you're right. You know, we, we feel like in a way we are kind of pushing back against the Facebooks of the awesome. world, you know, we want to, we want to bring it back to, you know, the journals and the research and the principles That's that make things, people out peer review, yeah, make things work for everyone. And for if the long term, for the long term, for the right. patients, not for the wallet, because the wallet will come if you do the right, the right thing. thing. It always does. Always man. does. Every it single always time. does. Karma, all, karma is it comes around. Bitch. That's right. So thank you for being on the show. And, and uh, <clears throat> thank you guys. You know, if you guys want to learn more again about Argon Dental, you can go to argondentalusa.com. Uh, if you want to learn more uh, about what we're doing, we want you to connect with us. We want you to go hit us up on Facebook, on Twitter. We want you guys to give us an awesome review on iTunes podcast. We want you to really tell other people about what you're getting from this show. You know, you get to you get the inside scoop on a lot of things. You know, some of the shows that are coming up, including this one, to kind of kicking off some really exciting stuff that's going to be coming up in the next couple of months with us. Oh, I mean, what? my that's, goodness. You, you guys by now have seen. You've seen some things. That we interviewed Frank Spear, right? Well, right? Well, Nice. Yeah, just happened, and we posted just a little picture on the Facebook. So we're the we're really it's we're kind of freaking out about it. It's really exciting. Yeah. So stick with us. We're gonna keep bringing the quality content that you guys expect from us. It's been a great day, Wes. Yeah. So I just want to say thanks once again to Joel, no, and you. we're glad to be with you guys today. We'll catch you next time on the Dental Guys. Peace out.